many multinationals at present have two or three accountants working for them, but will the new legislation, as you will propose, will that demand that companies only have one accounting firm sign off on the audited statements? It's too early to say. We are not quite certain as to what precisely happened in the Farmer Lad case, uh, but we do think that um, the whole supervisory structure in Italy needs to be looked at. Um, after all, supervisors in that country um, um, are supposed to look after the financial probity of, uh, of companies and the probity of financial statements, uh, and that does not seem to be the case at the moment. Uh, I think that European legislation will go a long way uh, to uh, establishing the correct conditions for well-performing accountants and auditors. But if there is defalcation, then we stand empty-handed. It's uh, up to the uh, national supervisors to see to it that that sort of thing doesn't happen. So all is not well, but uh, we are m very alive to what's, what's happening and we are working in particular in one of the accounting directives uh, to improving the situation uh, and the conditions under which accountants work. One of the elements to the Parmalat case is uh, an initiative by the Italian government to amend the bankruptcy laws, yeah. so to enable uh, government support maybe for the Parmalat company. Where does the European Commission stand on that? It's too early to say. It's too early to say. Um, th there is a very extensive body of European law on, um, on government assistance uh, and state subsidy. Uh, by and large, uh, I am not in favour of subsidies, and over the years, subsidies in the Euro Union have gone down. So, uh, we should be critical of um, of, of that um, of that instrument. But but let us see uh, what the Italian government is going to propose and and how we can react to that. One final topic that I want to raise with you is the stability pact and the yes. court case that uh, the Commission initiated earlier this week. Where do you stand in this discussion? Do you think it's good that the Commission is taking this to court? Yes. yes. Why? The, the uh, European Union is a community of law. Uh, and um, as everyone knows, uh, an agreement, and that is what the stability pact is, an agreement is the law between parties. Uh, if um, that law is not obeyed as we think it is not, as we are certain it is not, then uh, that infringement uh, ought to be addressed uh, and in strictly legal terms. Uh, we think that the uh, procedure has not been followed in a correct fashion. We address now the European Court with that question. We do not see the European Court as some instance that will tell the member states how to run their economic policy. That's not the, the role that the European Court of Justice is supposed to play. But it, it will have to answer the question, were the procedures followed, yes or no? And I think they were not. And I think that if the European Commission had not acted in this way, it would have fatally damaged its own credibility. So I'm a strong supporter of this step. But the consequence of acting in this way, of sticking to the rule of law, could be very significant if the Commission actually wins this case. Then theoretically, you could, they could ask Germany and France to be put back on the track that could potentially lead to sanctions over the stability pact. Do you think that path should be pursued if the Commission wins the case? Uh, essential for the stability pact is the automaticity of the procedures. If this happens, then that will happen. If this does not happen, then this other thing will happen. The automaticity must be guarded. And if the European Court of Justice sees it our way, it will be guarded. And the the results so that of mean sanctions the, for France. Ultimately. The 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 the, result, the 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 the, uh, the, re, the the result of a positive uh, decision by the European Court of Justice, positive in what, what I, in, in the sense that I advocate, uh, uh, w would be that the uh, the uh, the Council of Ministers will have to take a different. Uh, opinion. We'll have to adopt a different opinion and different decision. And from then on it follows that the, this automaticity will mean that, <coughs> that if France doesn't perform it, if, if France doesn't improve its performance, in the end it, it would indeed have to face the consequence of, of, uh, of uh, incurring sanctions.
some critics that we've been talking to in the last week find it very strange to see that the Commission goes to court at the very same time suggesting a strengthening of the pact, opening talks for revising the pact. How do you see that? Should the pact be amended? Uh, I am um, uh, uh, not convinced that the pact needs to be changed. It's good enough for me. It has sufficient flexibility. <coughs> if member states had done what they are supposed to, to do, uh, that is to say to bring the deficit down to zero or, uh, uh, or positive, uh, then there would be 3% flexibility for, for bad times. Uh, they have not done so. They have not um, uh, redressed uh, the, the, their, their, um, their accounts uh, when, when times were good, and therefore now that times are, are less good, uh, they, they come a cropper. But I do not think that the pact has to be changed. Uh, what I do think is that uh, fiscal policies will have to be changed. After all, the IMF regularly tells governments to reduce their expenditure by 1%, by 2%, by 3%. Uh, if uh, the IMF uh, uh, addresses that, that need to, to certain countries, in particular in the developing world, no one can tell me that it is impossible to do that in a well-developed country like France or, or, or Germany. So you don't believe that the stability and growth pact stands in the way of achieving economic Certainly progress not. in Europe? Certainly not. It is not necessary to spend money in order to create jobs. The French and the German finance ministers obviously have a completely different view when it comes to the stability pact. But then again, they are members of a different political party as well. That's it for this edition of uh, EU Coming Together. I'm Raymond Franken in Strasbourg at the European Parliament. Goodbye. See you next time. CNBC ticker is sponsored by City Index. Cityindex.co.uk CNBC Europe's money and sport, the inside story. Ross Westgate brings you an in-depth look into what's really going on in the business of sport. News, features and analysis. One-on-one -on -one interviews with the biggest personalities in the business. Who's earning the big money, who's spending it and what's happening behind the scenes. Exclusive reports on everything from the stars to the sponsors, from football to Formula One. CNBC Europe's Money and Sport, the inside story. things are better done by yourself like trading direct on 12 international markets with internax.com your online broker in luxembourg Samsung E700 with self-portrait and multi-shot. Shoot what you love. Take advantage of detailed market analysis and exclusive interviews as Europe's leading financial broadcaster can now be streamed directly to your PC with CNBC Europe Broadband. Log on to cnbceurope.com slash broadband for details. David Schuster at the Polk County Convention. Those delegates will explain coming up. I'm Chris Chancing in Iowa, where it is a statistical dead heat between the four top candidates, they and their representatives crisscrossing the state. I'll have a live report. I'm Kevin Seitz in Baghdad. The death toll from that suicide car bombing attack rises, and tens of thousands of Shiites march for direct elections. I'll have a report. We will 
also have an update from Arizona where a couple of inmates have taken a couple of guards hostage. Good afternoon. I'm Sam Shane. I'm Contessa Brewer as we do at the top of the bottom.